say more on your philosophy and approach about healing communities. This is an area where people can sometimes feel helpless or easily defeated given the amount of societal changes, ch changes and challenges that are going on in this world. Uh, healing communities, unfortunately, uh, get, uh, a lot of them have happened in various modalities and I watch this and shamanic traditions and various others where egos get too involved. So people, uh, I'm going to back up and take a sidetrack and come back to this. Very often when working in the energetic field, what happens is instead of getting more present, we inflate our egos. So an inflated ego is, is I'm going to do unto you because I'm so powerful. So shamans oftentimes were invoking their energetic powers against you to whatever it was that they could create. And that in the if you do any of the studies in that tradition show that there were shamanic wars and they were doing all sorts of what became later we known as witchcraft and sorcery and, and things of that nature. Uh, what it basically means is, is the ego takes over control of the healing presence to use it for their own intentions and that's a do unto. So that's part of the issue that, that is, has always been a difficult thing is because there's people who who come in who are highly skilled at, sh at running energy and, and manipulating energy and doing various things and, uh, and they miss the point. And they have a need to be important, to fix somebody, to show how powerful they are. And power to me is presence. If you're doing unto, you're forcing yourself and your intention on another person. And to me, that's harmful to that person's spirit and soul. So that's a differentiating uh, feature for me around that. So then I apply that to healing community, it's the same thing, is I try to avoid hierarchies, but it, you always have difficulties because when you're building communities, people are always looking at who's getting something that I'm not getting. So favoritism and things of that nature, and I try to work as closely as I can with them. By for One example would be is if they're feeling like I'm giving prejudicial treatment to somebody, Explain to me how you saw that, but more importantly, explain to me where that came from within you. How did you interpret that? Is there something similar to it? And after you've reflected on that a while, come back to me and let's have a conversation. Um, so healing communities often, unfortunately, we have a hierarchy that's built into a lot of how civilization and, and it's not saying that hierarchies aren't good. It's just simply saying is, is if the ego gets involved and gets inflated, it becomes a problem, especially around uh, uh, I've been around healers that you do it my way or you don't do it at all. Uh, there's value to that uh, if they're really good, but it's not what I do. And that's how I differentiate. I don't want to denigrate it because there's some powerful shamans that I've seen do some work or there's some uh, powerful healers that I've seen do work and it's pretty amazing um, and it's valuable. And th if they, that's what the client wants, then that's helpful. But once people experience what we do and it's totally different and they differentiate, then they make a choice. Do I want to go back to that and or do I want to come over to this on occasion? And so that's one way to look at a healing community. The other side of the healing communities in the indigenous cultures, communities where ceremonies and rituals were set up to create sacred space amongst the community. So if you want to call it sacred space, uh, Victor Turner would call it liminal space. Um, and I'll give you an example. If there is dissent in the community, the tribe, which usually is a small village, and let's just even use a marital thing, they had two ways to deal with it. One is to help the two of them, as they would say, get rid of all the bad thoughts. So they would tie them, the circle we'd put around them, a circle of ashes, so the circles of the community, a circle of ashes, the sacred ashes, and then they'd tie them back to back, and they both had to scream all their hate about the other person. And the community was going to hold it. We will hold this for you and release it. So what ended up happening was, is whatever the various things were, they had to do it long enough, like most people, you break down the story eventually and you realize what, what was the triggering event. And when that's expressed, the other person had no idea, apologizes, and it dissolves. So they understood psychology and energy far beyond us, and there's still tribes that practice a lot of these types of things. 
So when you have a community, a, a community is, is actually understanding that there's a common bond. What I'm trying to do in building a community of the healing presence or the healing den idea is, is if we're all holding presence and we're all being healing presence, we create an energetic field that could be actually have an impact even beyond just us. But more importantly, because we're all fully present, we're not jockeying for position of who does what, when, and where. We all are exactly where we need to be. And there will there be a hierarchy? Yes, some people will be more skilled than others. But it's not bad. It's not judged as good or bad. It's just simply saying, we're all doing the best to be fully present to ourselves. And any thoughts of envy, jealousy, et cetera, are my responsibility to look at because nobody's doing unto you except myself.